have it maybe okay it's working so first of all I'd like to share with you my latest hobby if you don't know about this woman her name is Kestrel Montez you should follow her on Facebook you could follow her on sorry not Facebook Instagram there's this book I just purchased called Modern Calligraphy. I bought it around Christmas time, beginning of December. But inside the book, she teaches you how to write calligraphy. And this woman's handwriting is gorgeous. In fact, so beautiful that she creates fonts. And uh, one of her fonts called Verbatim, I purchased which also happens to be the logo of my coaching practice. Uh, Soul Elevated Life is actually built with the verbatim font. So we purchased the font and then I hired a friend, talented Lisa Fenstermacher, and she created that beautiful, gorgeous logo for me with the lotus with the golden stuff emitting out of it. And, um, and there's lots of tools that comes with the art of calligraphy, which are practice sheets. Uh, you can buy a kit from Kestrel that comes with ink. There's white ink, which I have not practiced with yet. There is black ink, Sumi ink. And there is um, there's this cute little glass container that you can pour your ink in so you don't waste any ink. And um, I just take it directly out of the, uh, I use it directly out of here, because <laughs> this is, um, this is called a nib holder, which looks like a pen, you hold it like a pen. And then you can buy a kit that comes with a tin of nibs. This one is called the Strauss pumpkin nib or something, which is beautiful. Um, all these nibs are really beautiful, but my favorite nib so far is this one, this nib. See, it's very sharp. This is what was similar to the blade that was used to microblade my eyebrows. Uh, this one is called the, can't read it. Uh, it's Japanese, number not, number three. I feel I have my contacts in so I can't see very close. Superior to Takikawa. This is my favorite nib. But anyways, there's this little hole right here, the eye, and you want to dip the nib in so the ink reaches beyond the eye. So you learn so much when you get into calligraphy. But I've been practicing a lot, so this is what one of my practice sheets looks like. Um, I'm tracing so you can see like it looks really perfect because I'm tracing at the bottom she kind of gives you free reign to practice on your own and that's when my handwriting gets a little dicey but um, you know you practice over and over and over and you want to practice like on a padded surface so you can you can purchase like this thing that she created or you can have it um, you can have it engraved if you like um, you can get it more than a logo added for an extra $15 which is what I did so you can see my name company right there so I thought that was so beautiful it's like this gorgeous um, golden hue it's just beautiful I love it I love it but the reason why you want to use you could use that plastic sheet is you can get a light table which is super cheap on Amazon it's like 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something and it just plugs into like an LED source like um, L, L LED? No. A USB. USB uh, cable. You just plug it into like a power source like your laptop or your computer or the wall or something. And you can put this thin sheet on it. And then you can put a page of her book on it. And then you can put your own paper on it. Blank paper. Like HP Premium 32 paper. Cheapest on Amazon. You can buy this paper which is high quality because the nib is so sharp it won't get caught on the um, paper. If you buy paper that's super thin, um, the ink can make run. If you buy paper that's 
uh, has some cotton on it. Uh, you run the risk of snagging, catches the paper a little bit, um, which happens a little with this paper. This is resume paper, which has 25% cotton, and so it snags a little bit. So when you do the very thin lines, you have to go very, very lightly with your hand so it doesn't catch onto the paper because the edge of the pen, the nib, is super duper sharp. Hey, I knew nothing, none of this before I got into calligraphy, and now I know so much. And Kestrel Montez is amazing, and she tells you so much in the book, and that's how I've learned so much. Hey, when you want to learn something majorly effectively, you consult the experts. You consult a person who's done it before, because why start from scratch? when there's an amazing resource like Kestrel out there who's already done all the research, so why would I do all the research? <laughs> um, so I just love her book. You must, you should definitely, definitely consider getting this amazing book, Modern Calligraphy. And I also want to share with you my new plant that I got at Trader Joe's. This is a succulent plant. Amy Trung would be super impressed because she's obsessed with succulents. This one was like $7.99 at Trader Joe's. And I thought, I need a plant in my home office. We also have a new turtle. Have you met the new sea turtle? I got that at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> that was like 40% off. Um, so yes, yeah, so that is my new hobby. And I definitely want to share that with you, to tell you, to share with you what I've been up to. And the other thing I want to share with you about which is kind of a controversial topic, is my plant-based diet. I'm a vegan, uh, which means that I eat plants. Um, I'm not 100% vegan. Um, I do eat honey. My father-in-law is a beehive keeper, and he treats the bees very, very well. And then when there's leftover honey for the season, he will save me some. And um, so it's called robbing the honey. So a true vegan would not eat any products, including... Uh, honey, so I do do honey, so that's cheating a little bit as far as far as like the definition of a vegan goes But the vegan diet itself is or the vegan practice or the view of veganism could be seen as controversial and um, and I've always been very PC when it comes to speaking about veganism because I'm always I usually think, well, I don't want to offend anybody. What if I offend somebody? And so I decided that I'm just going to put it out there and I'll just say what there is to say. And you can agree with me. You can disagree with me. Feel free to put in comments and your opinions on whether you agree with me, disagree with me, you think I'm right, I'm wrong or whatever. But that's just simply how I feel. Or simply my belief and uh, it's not necessarily right or wrong it's just simply my theory but I um, wanted to give you a little backstory on my plant-based journey my plant power journey I started becoming a vegetarian when I was 13 and it came with my meditation practice um, a lighter body makes for a lighter vehicle uh, to um, meditate with and to um, just get into Zen easily and so that's when I started um, I started committing to a vegetarian diet at that point when I was around 13 I ate dairy products with my vegan diet or vegetarian diet so I wasn't vegan then I was vegetarian and then I did that for about 20 23 years no 20 See, when I was about 38 is when I became, so about 25 years, I was a vegetarian. So that meant I ate cheese. And then when I was on maternity leave with my daughter, I saw this video of this poor mama cow. And she, they took her milk. And then after they took her milk, they slaughtered her because they didn't need her for milk anymore. So they used her for her, her meat. And I saw the video and I was bawling in tears because I was a mom at that point. I, mean, I still am a mom, but I was a nursing mom. And I was nursing my daughter, Ava. And to me, I was very much like that cow. I was nursing her young with her milk. And then 
I thought that was all I was doing. I was simply eating dairy products and supporting the dairy industry and I wasn't truly harming any cows because I was merely drinking milk or not drinking milk, eating cheese, which is made from milk. And I thought, that's not a big deal. This cow is happy. It's probably on a farm where it's eating, you know, grass and being pasture raised and everything. But I don't know for sure. I've never truly done the research, you know, with seeing if all of my dairy comes from pasture raised cows that die naturally. I just knew that when they take the milk, the cow is still alive and therefore she is not dead. But after they take the milk or after she's finished contributing her milk, they probably slaughter her, you know, and I didn't consider that at all. I was pretty short-sighted and just simply thought about my preference for cheese, for dairy cheese. So after I saw that video, I realized like I was supporting something that I didn't believe in. I, I was supporting the killing of this innocent mother cow. And that's when I decided that it's, it's just, it's not for me. I'm not supporting this business. I'm not supporting a practice of killing. Like my whole meditation practice, my whole vegetarian practice about you know, respecting others and respecting sentiment beings and not killing. And so why the heck am I participating in something that results in killing? And so I decided to just be done with it. And it's funny because my, <laughs> one of my, 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 I write out manifestations every day and I'll talk about, um, I'll talk about what kind of clients I'd like to call into my practice, the my kindred, kindred soul mate clients, the clients that would truly resonate with me and who I am and the message uh, I have to share with them and the space that I provide for them to truly find their life purpose and to live their life, pur life purpose and to live a deeply meaningful, powerful, uh, profound life that is soul centered, soul based and uh, resonates with, you know, who they came here to be and do that is very much part of their soul purpose and their soul's expansion and growth. And, and one of the criteria I put in my list of clients were that they were plant powered or very plant powered friendly. <laughs> and one of my, my, um, one of my, my, my clients, she, uh, she, before she was my client, she said, Hey Tuan, you're an amazing coach. And I definitely would like to, take you up on your offer to have uh, coaching sessions with you. And she said, um, I said, good, uh, that's wonderful. You know, I'd be happy to work with you. And you meet my first requirement, which is you're vegan, you're plant powered. She goes, is that really one of your requirements to be one of your clients? And I said, well, I did manifest that my clients would be plant powered friendly or mostly plant powered. So you made that first criteria cut, kind of half jokingly and half serious. And she's like, how come? You know, what's, what's the story behind that? And, <laughs> and, and I said, uh, just between you and me, uh, so me speaking to you as a fellow plant-powered vegan, a plant-powered person, I said, I think, here's my theory, so you can disagree with it or agree with it. it could be highly controversial and I know that you may not agree with it but it's my theory so I'll share it with you even if there may be some backlash and if there's not that's cool and if there is there is and my theory is as a human soul you reincarnate multiple times into a human body to live on this planet and it is a place where you can experience all there is to experience to live on this planet and my theory is once you've reincarnated enough like you reincarnate multiple, 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 multiple times, you finally come to the realization that your existence, your ability to thrive and do well does not depend on you eating meat. It does not depend on you killing another being for your benefit. If it could be avoided, then why do it? And I said to her that I think that my theory is when you've gotten to that point in your journey as a soul and you've reincarnated enough, you get that you get it that it's you're beyond that. You be, you're beyond slaughtering and killing for your benefit. 
you're beyond eating meat as a way to sustain yourself. You don't need it, um, and therefore you don't think it's necessary, so it's not something you support. And I said, those are the kind of women that I would be super duper privileged and happy to work with because to me, they probably are already pretty progressive and advanced in their soul's expansion and development journey. And they are ready in this lifetime to finally take the plunge and do what it is that they came here to do, to finally live out and experience their soul purpose, to finally say enough is enough, it's time. It's absolutely time for me to do something meaningful with my life, something this lifetime to truly have it count, for me to operate from my soul's alignments, for me to fulfill my soul's purpose. What it is, what is it that I came to do? What kind of came here to do? What impact do I choose to leave before I leave this planet? What uh, what is sown in my hearts of hearts? What is in my depths of my soul that I know that I came here to do what is it and that those are the people that are ready those are the people that feel like there's this this need to do to live that kind of life to do their soul purpose and those are the people that I call into my client base so those are the people that I'm looking to work with me as a client to coach capacity so that they can be empowered and for me to provide, provide the space for them to tap into that, to tune into that frequency, that channel, and finally do in the depths of their soul what there is to do. And they just know it. They feel it into the depths of their soul. They know their purpose. They know what they came to do. And if they don't, they know it's time. They feel like something is missing. They're, they're not doing that thing they came here to do. That's when they consult with me. That's when they hire me. And that's when we work together. And we find out what that thing is. And we get to it. <laughs> it's time. When you feel that urge in your heart, in your soul, it's time. It's time for you to live into it and figure out and be a detective and discover what it what is it all about. You don't have a desire in your heart for no reason. The reason is that desire is meant to be fulfilled. So if you have a desire in your heart to truly serve and to truly make a difference and do that thing you came here to do, but you don't have the courage or you think you don't have the courage, you don't know how, or you think you don't know how, or you don't know what action to take, or you think you don't have the capacity to take the action, that's the power of having a life coach. That's the power of hiring a life coach. That's what I do. I help you tune into that, tap into that, access it, see into it. I hold the line for you. I provide that space and I challenge you. I never accept something less than who you truly are and what you came here to be. I challenge you and I provide that space for you to truly look the blind spots that you have it's like my coach says something profound she's like you're you have this blind spot you don't know about you keep trying to change lanes into this blind spot but there's something there so you can't change lanes into that next lane and then you can either discover what that blind spot is with or without your coach hopefully with your coach because it's a little faster and then you can speed up or slow down and either resolve the blind spot or be aware of the blind spot and go slower than the blind spot or speed up and go past the blind spot but until you even realize there's a blind spot you're never going to be able to change lanes you're never going to be able to shift your channel your your vibrational frequency to get into that other lane <laughs> and she gave me that example and it was so profound and it was so true i have all these blocks and all these hang-ups about money and and i had today i had a call with one of my clients and I usually give like a free session for free um, because I felt this need to convince myself that I was worthy enough to be a coach. And she asked me, what's, how much does the next session cost? And I, you know, like my typical response is I get the heebie jeebies, you know, like I hate talking about money. I hate thinking that I could do this for a living. I hate, I don't hate it. I resist it. I resist the fact that I could possibly do this for a living, I could possibly 
leverage millions of dollars to elevate humanity in our planet. I resist the possibility that I could do this as a full-time coach if I had 10 clients. I could sustainably live on the West Coast doing this full-time if I had 10 clients. And when it came to the topic of money, I would shy away from it. I would discount my rates. I would skirt around it. I would I would get into all this noise and all this distraction about money. And so finally I decided to say it, just say what it is to say. I mean, you've already journaled about it. You've already processed it. So tell her how much it's going to cost. And I share with her that it was a thousand dollars to work with me each month. And it was, this was a number I always shied away from. Like I never wanted to say I charge a thousand dollars a month. As soon as someone has any resistance, I would be like, but I'll charge less or what can you afford? I know you don't make six figures yet. And like, I go into this crazy, like into the weeds. I go off on this crazy tangent because I'm so resistant to that amount of money, that possibility of me being a full-time coach, working this life coaching practice a full-time. And finally, I'd <laughs> after some serious, like three hour work with my coach last Sunday, and lots of journaling and processing and setting expectations for myself and my clients, I realized that, okay, enough is enough. Choose and decide and know that you charge $1,000 a month. And there are clients out there who pay $1,000 a month. I pay more than $1,000 a month for my client, for my coach. And, um, and I was just like, I charge $1,000 a month. And my client, when she heard that, she didn't even bat bat an eyelash she's like okay cool thanks and I was thinking okay so clearly it's all me like <laughs> I have all this noise I have all these distractions I have all this money block around money and then for other people it might be nothing it might be something it might be worth it I pay my coach a lot more than a thousand dollars and it is worth every single penny to have her as my life coach I trained under her. I'm gifted in the area of life coaching. It is my sole purpose, is what I came here to do. I know in my hearts of hearts that this is my true calling, and yet I deny it. You know, I, I resist earning a sustainable amount of money to do this for a living and to also elevate our planet and humanity at the same time. Like, I just totally resisted it. And I was thinking, why, why are you doing this? And, you know, and I was journaling about it and processing it. And it always comes back to the reptilian brain. It always comes back to the fear. It always comes back to being a human and so many things, so many things. So I'm human just like you. I am no one special other than the fact that my sole purpose happens to be being a life coach. And my sole purpose happens to be here to serve you especially if you are of my kindred tribe, if you are a plant-powered woman and you have this calling in your heart and you know that you have your sole purpose and you came here for a reason and you would like to leave an impact and serve in your best capacity, one that's truly deeply meaningful to you, but you have no idea how to start, how to do it, where to begin, how do you get your life in order, how do you make time to do this stuff, that's where I come in. That's what I do for you as a life coach. And that's where you fill out the form. You answer my questions. And then we talk. We talk on a weekly basis. We meet on a weekly basis on a virtual app called Zoom. I see video of you. You see video of me. Video of me. I record the audio and visual per, uh, video. I record the audio and the video. And I save it on Google Drive for you. And you can listen to it over and over and over again. You'll have this for life. And um, that's what having a coach is like. You have this deep, powerful, profound conversation in this arena, in this space that I provide for you. I hold a line for you for truly your soul's expansion and growth in an area of discomfort. <laughs> When it starts getting easier, getting too comfortable, it probably means you're not growing. And that is not a good thing uh, if you were looking for a transformation. So that's that's what I provide. And it's 
utterly fulfilling. You know, before every coaching session I have with my clients, I would close my eyes and I would pray and I would say, Dear Heavenly Father, dear multiverse, please help me listen with my heart and my soul. And for us to have action spurring uh, coaching session uh, that resonates deeply, profoundly with my and my clients' souls. And for my clients uh, to truly live their soul elevated life. And and inevitably, even when I started having doubts at the beginning and the middle of the call, by the time the call wraps up, it's always soul-bearing, soul-expanding, deeply profound, deeply powerful. And I realize that it's so much more than just the words that are uttered between me and my client, but also the energy that I exchange, the space and arena and the line that I hold for my clients. And there's just something amazing that happens. It's utterly powerful. It's amazing. It's remarkable. And it's truly exactly the way it is meant to go. And I say what there is to say, and my clients hear what it is that they hear, and their lives start transforming, and our both of our souls are expanding, and we learn so much along the way. It's powerful. Having a coach in your life is utterly powerful. Once you have a life coach, there's no going back because a chemical reaction has started and you are forever changed and you're forever transformed. Whether you truly see it on a three-dimensional physical realm or not, but the inside, your view, your interactions with your loved ones, the people you meet, the people you see, everything shifts. It's amazing. (laughs) It's absolutely amazing and I love it. I love it deeply. So there you go. Shared a little bit about my latest hobby, my view on veganism, as controversial as it might be. And if you're hearing this message, it's no accident. It is by divine timing. And it sounds like it's time for you to have a coach in your life, for you to be on your way, start living your soul elevate life, and uh, for you to live into your soul purpose. Sending you love, light, and uh, deep fulfillment with your soul's purpose. I'll see you tomorrow.